Hello YouTube, this is part 7 of my lead playthrough. In the last episode we were getting a new follower, the Dung Eater. And in this episode, we're going to be trying to continue the story while also getting on with our build. And I think a fun thing to do right now would be to upgrade our katanas. So, today we're going to be visiting some caves at the beginning of this episode. The two caves that we need to visit to get our, to get, um, what do you call it? They're like, to buy smithing stone one and twos and threes and fours essentially, is this one, and this one, and there's technically a third cave we need to look at, which is this one down here by the lake. If we don't have enough ones and twos, that is. We'll have to go get that too. We're going to start off at this one over here. And just go and get the uh, the thing. So yeah, our closest race is the Earth Tree Gazing Hill. I'm going to quickly go there. Grab a soda real quick. <laughs> Root beer zero. Alright, so. Marker. Let's just get going. Um, little update. I think I finally fixed all of, hopefully, all of my visual and audio bugs. It was mostly setting issues. So hopefully now... I have pretty decent audio, and hopefully you're seeing this in HD with no, like, bitrate issues, no blurry screens, and hopefully during the fights it doesn't stutter at all. I've got the bitrate pretty high, I've got a good internet connection for the recording, uh, I just hope that it's, it's all working out. And yeah, basically I hope this is a high quality Elden Ring upload. So when you get here, you're going to need a stone sword key, it looks like. Hopefully we have some. If not, I know where to go get some. There we do. I'm going to go in here with the old Altus tunnel. Go down these stairs. Blade of Death, Bloody Slash. Two really fun abilities. I still want to get a new armor, but I haven't really thought of uh, what to do. Okay, so in here, guys, these enemies, you actually want to hit them with heavy attacks because they have, like, hard skin. Oh, that was close. I feel like one hit. And I don't think heavies work really well against these guys. Back in my Elden Ring groove. Oh, so this is what we're coming here for. We're, we're grabbing smithing stones. Because they give us fives and sixes in this cave. Um, we're not going to go through the whole cave, though. I'm just going to show you guys where to get the... Uh, the... Little... I still don't know what's called. A bell bearing. We're trying to get a bell bearing. Those guys aren't aggro, so we're gonna leave a bomb. Come back there. Item. That's good. I should probably put on my lantern. Go ahead and put on it. I did have it on. So, I don't even know this guy's bleed. 
down here. Night there. Backstab on them. Backstab, sneaky, sneaky. And uh, absolute. Oh my god, there's two. What have I done? Okay, good double hit. Dodge. I should have seen that coming. Alright, heal up. Oh my god, we're getting a lot of aggro here. Alright, that's what not to do, guys. <laughs> you died. I bit off a little more than I can chew. But that's what Grace is there for. My sword is seeming a little lackluster against them, guys. Can't wait to start dual wielding, though. That's kind of the goal of this episode, is to get our dual wielding going. Because dual wield is the bread and butter through Samurai. Gonna hit him with some range. That's a lot of free damage, huh? Ow. is cool, but it seems like cheating. Oh, okay, that's just so much range. Buddy. Okay, that could have been bad. I'm notoriously so bad at fighting these knights. Good. Staggered, I'm pretty sure. If not, yeah. Okay, <laughs> that worked out a little better. Um, get as many of these smithing stones as we can for later. Oh my God! There's two dogs in here. Oh my God! After we get our katanas online, we're actually going to be working on getting our third viable talisman for this build. It's going to be the Bleed Talisman, if you've never heard of it. It's really broken. And we're going to acquire it, because it's a good time. It's a lot of damage. You just got to stop spamming. Shall we continue? Back on. He's a rune arc. Want more stats. I gotta beat this troll. Probably cast rock breath. Okay, cool. You know what? Let's just go. Let's go full cheese. Let's get the let's get our follower out on here. The dung eater. I wanna see what he's got. Unupgraded. Alright, unupgraded, he might not be anything, but I just wanna see him go, you know. Boom. I mean he's he's kinda cool at least. 
not really doing much yet, but... I mean... He dodge rolls. That's a good sign. I like this. He's got swagger. He has like a debuff, right? Is that what I'm seeing? He debuffed the troll. You gotta bleed proc there. Oh my god. Yeah, see, he's nuts. Wow, that is so cool. So yeah, he applies like a debuff. He can apply bleed. Very fun. Um. Did I go to the wrong cave, though? Oh my gosh, you know what it is, team. It was this cave... ...and this cave. Oh man, what a terrible walkthrough. You know what? I haven't done that cave in a while, though. That was fun. We got some smithing stones. Let's just... ...get over to this one, though. Put a marker there. Get rid of my other markers. This one you don't have to beat the boss for, so I'll just show you how to get to it quicker. I was wondering why I didn't recognize some of the stuff. That is my bad. This is technically my gameplay as well, so, you know. Hope you enjoyed that little fight. We kind of showed off the, uh, dung eater that we spent so hard working on, so. That's always good. And those smithing stones could probably come in handy in a bit to upgrade our katana anyway. We need to go around here. I was wondering why it cost us a stone sword key, too. I think that was just an optional cave. Anyway, let's get to the actual cave we need to get to. One of them. In here. Careful, because these enemies are crazy. Crazy fast. Okay. They're not like too difficult, really. Ow! Come on, that's cheating. I'm just gonna use jumping heavies, because they're pretty. Oh god, that could have killed me. Running heavies would be good. An arc, that's always useful. Kingstone hiding. Good. Cool. Um, I don't really want to fight these. <laughs> Keep moving. Now, I believe... I don't want to fight a few of the things in here so I don't just die. Oh, I really thought I could do better than that. Oh, like that. Oh my goodness, I almost died. Let's just do this real quick. Wait, was this a cave that I had to actually go through? Am I just misremembering things? You know what, this is one of those stages that I don't do very often. It's just level my weapons a lot. But you do kind of need a lot of regular smithing stones for this build. God, so much magic damage. Right, there we go. That bloody slash does quite a bit. I want your smithing stone, sir, so I'm gonna have to backstab you. Or not. There we go. <laughs> Arched heavy. Didn't kill. 
Charged heavy. That one did kill. Uh, you don't backstabbing. It's over here. Okay, so I was wrong. Um, this one to get the to get the anything stone bell bearing. I think you do have to actually kill this boss. And it's actually kind of a difficult one, so when you get in here, you want to pop your wondrous physic, and you want to summon your dung eater, and then you want to cast some dragon breath spells while you have infinite mana, and then you want to pull out your uh, black knife and go to town on these guys, because it actually destroys them. And these rock enemies are kind of hard for our katana to deal with, is why I'm saying don't bother. I would just go straight to the black knife on this one. Use your ally to your advantage. Once you break their armor, they pretty much get one shot. Breaking attacks and jumping heavies. Oh, like that. We broke the poise. You can literally just bully this thing. It can't even fight back. Let's go. That's my boy. Alright, so that's the somber stone bell bearing. That'll be useful if we want to upgrade our black knife, which we probably do. So, the other tunnel we need to get to which is arguably the more important one for this video. It was over here. Marker on it. Let's travel close to it. This is the one where I'm pretty sure we just go pick it up. We don't have to fight the boss of the tunnel. I thought it was both tunnels, but I was mistaken. Oh, you know what? We should probably level up, huh? I'm gonna start leveling my endurance, because... I want to swing more. I want to be able to wear better armor and be able to carry two katanas at once. We're going to level endurance for a while. Just a little bit. Ready? Shout out to Felix Guaman. Um, so, we're gonna head into this cave. Get this, uh, oh, this smithing stone, and then we're gonna show you guys some upgrades. And then we might go get one more if we don't have enough access to smithing stones. But we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. You need to hit this wall here, it's an illusion wall, west, and literally you just come over here, roll through this, and there's a chest over here, we're gonna grab this chest, and we're gonna make a way, pretend like nothing ever happened, <laughs> out the way we came, just completely abandoned this place. You could go through it. It's uh, decent runes and all that, but it's not like super interesting. Doesn't make for a great video. Good to just show you guys that that stuff is there, though, right? So anyway, next is uh, we're just gonna go ahead and go do this. Um, pass this. Way. Probably riding from. Probably riding from here.
to it. Ride, ride, ride. But yeah, as soon as we upgrade our katanas and we feel like we're confident enough, we're gonna go take on the sewers today. We go get our bleed talisman. If you haven't heard of the bleed talisman, the way that it works is whenever you get a bleed proc, you get a little buff for, I believe it's 30 seconds. That gives you 20% more damage to everything. And it's really easy to get that first bleed proc, and then all of a sudden your next any attack is hitting harder. Super strong. Don't know why they made bleed even more powerful. The effect is already really fun and kind of dumb. But you know we take it as an arcane build. It is uh, free damage. It's incredibly good for our third talisman slot. try to speed run this one. Well, actually, should I go through it and grab the stone? No, I don't need to, because I'll just use... So, yeah, we're just going to save our runes on this one. Try to speed run it to the boss, if possible. At this point, by the way, you're saving your Wonders Physique for the boss fight, so you can summon your ally. It does cost quite a bit of mana. And then also it lets you, because it's 10 seconds of infinite mana, you can use that to cast your Rotten Breath without having to talk on potions. So real quick, I'm going to show you this just because it is important for some builds. This, I, oh, oh, am I dumb? You know what? That was not what I thought it was. I thought that that was a talisman, but I was thinking of something else, clearly. I'm going to speed run it through here. I do recommend you guys conquering all of these mining caves once in your regular playthroughs, just because like they're kind of fun, but they're it's like they're key to just getting your gear leveled up enough to deal with bosses. It's one of the key things that they wanted you to be able to do in order to make this game easier. Go do these side quests that make you just purely stronger, make your weapon stronger. I just did that just to slow him down. I want to get shot in the back. Yeah, I'm literally just trying to speed run it to the boss. Right there. We are drink our wonders physic. We don't really need our summon here, but you know what? It's funny. I'm surprised you can rot that thing. Please bloody slash because it has a lot of poise damage. That's kind of how you beat these crystal bosses faster is you just use poise damage. Because if you break their stance, they become really funnily weak. And there it goes. Pop. 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 And that should be our bell bearing. Alright, flower. Well, we got the bell bearings. What do we do with them? 
You go. Turn them in. Go to the round table. Sit through your fun load screen. You head over here. You talk to these creepy ladies. They don't talk back. And you give them all of your bell bearings that you can. And now they sell all those stuff. So, things stone ones, twos, threes, fours. And they even have like stone sword keys and stuff. Um, there it is. The spinning stones, you can buy as many as you want. If they have a number, that means it's not infinite. Basically, yeah, we need threes and fours. I don't know how many we need. So we're gonna look at our inventory. Bolstering materials. Or like, we should look at our melee weapon. We're gonna put it in our... Uchi Katana. Naga Kiba there. Uchi Katana on our left. This is plus seven. Plus zero. So we need 24 Living Stone ones. We have two, so we need to buy 22. We need. 21 of those. Good. And then we're going to need a plus 7. We get plus 8 and 9. That's going to cost 3 and 6. That's 9. 12. That's 21. Can't afford 21. Well, for now, we're just gonna upgrade what we can. This is pretty expensive. We have some runes we can pop, but we might just have to go do our thing and then just spend our runes on upgrades instead of leveling up for a while. Okay, so we're gonna get the Negakiba cut up to speed. Okay, so now it's plus six, which kind of is plus seven. And back already. No matter. Leia. We need to duplicate Bloody Slash, so that's what we're gonna do right now. And we're gonna put Bloody Slash on the Negakiba. Set it to blood. And now our Bloody Slash has way more reach, because if you look at the Nagakiba, it is way longer than the Uchi Katana. That's why we put it in our right hand. And now, when you click the left bumper, you'll get a new move set. So if we want to go test it out, we can actually go fight this guy over here. How long that sword is. This actually does work to increase your range. You're running heavy now, it becomes a great attack. Our Crouch L2 has crazy good range. And after you click left bumper, you get this little chain attack, which will increase your bleed procs like crazy. But you're gonna need way more stamina to keep it up, which is why we're gonna start leveling endurance a little bit. If we look at our equipment too, we're just gonna make sure it's still medium roll. But yeah, after you got that, we're just gonna spend our levels on Buying smithing stones and upgrading our weapons for a while. Okay. So, talisman. Remember how to get to the sewer? We're gonna go to the underground roadside. And we're gonna be traversing the underground. So, you come out this door. Actually go Right down here. Careful, because they're born to knock you off. 
Oh my god, speaking of knock you off. <laughs> I just got destroyed. <laughs> Alright, alright. Try this again. Going east to this ladder. Go down. Let's use black knife a little bit. At this point in the video and in the build, try to get used to uh, using your double attack. Oh, I don't have enough stats to wield the Negakiba. I need 18 strength, 22 dex. That is funny. So we actually need the great- oh my god. We actually need the great rune activated to use our Nagakiba. That's a problem. We're gonna- instead of leveling those stats, we're gonna take a different approach. We're gonna go get a second Uchi Katana. So, if you watch this far in the video, um, don't waste your smithing stones on the Nagakiba. I hope you guys are able to follow along with my route here. Basically, I'm taking a couple shortcuts. Um, but yeah, don't level your Nagakiba. We're gonna go get a second Uchi Katana because... Oh my god! Okay, we made it. Um... <laughs> If it would let me talk. Second Uchi Katana. Why? We don't want to level our strength and dexterity. Why? Because we want more mind, health, and arcane. To max out on bleed. So. We're going to focus on just the Uchi Katana. We're actually going to put the Nagakiba away. We're going to go get a... Uh, second Uchi Katana. Because Samurais can do that. Now if you weren't a samurai, but you just went and got an Uchi Katana and you have the Negakiba, you are gonna have to invest in enough stats to be able to wield it, so... Go ahead and do that. For us, we're... we're gonna... We're gonna be okay. We're gonna get two Uchi Katanas, you can do that. Alright, so this is actually where we're getting our talisman, so just follow along carefully. You're gonna come up to these fire guys. You kill them pretty easily just by dodging when they explode. We're getting to the point in this build where it is gonna become better not to use bloody slashes often. And it'll be better just to spam your light attacks, especially when you have two katanas. Oh my god, ow. Alright. So for this fire thing, right? We're gonna let's shoot again. We're gonna go knock it down. Now that's part of the reason right here that you wanted to spam your light attacks. We have this little talisman that is increasing our damage with successive attacks. Plus we're getting the bleed procs. So our bloody slash is kind of just turning into what makes our katanas have bleed, but we don't necessarily, we don't need the bloody slash as often. I, I like to use it just for, purely for the range. Oh my god. I needed to focus a little bit there. I probably should use my black knife. I didn't think this omen was that strong. Oh god, he's ugly. <laughs> Yeah, this, this video we're going to get significantly stronger once again. Which will be helpful because some of the enemies that we are going to be facing pretty much call for the upgrades when you're a bleed build. You, you kind of always want to be at peak damage. Bleed is kind of like an all or nothing strategy. You're going in, you're trying to hit really fast, hit the bleed procs, and if they don't die, they kind of kill you. 
But ours is more well-rounded because we do have different tools in our kit, like Rotten Breath and Black Knife. But some people like to just do stick to the pure melee bleed strategy, and that's fine too. It's close. Of the reason I wanted to upgrade my katanas before I came down here, but you'll see it's very doable. I'm gonna play it slow. If you want, you can do this video out of order. You can do the smithing stones on your own time, like at the runes. Get your katana to like plus 12 and then come down here, and you'll literally be twice as strong, so you can give that a shot too. Alright, so when you head down here, it's gonna, it's trying to trick you, the game's trying to like replicate the dungeon again. It's gonna look like you're walking through the same thing. Like, see there's like this, this is open. But those are like optional side bosses. But if you just go back this way again, up these stairs, we're just trying to get to the, the actual talisman. You'll notice that this thing is down. If you had knocked it down, like earlier, the flame thing, it's down. If you didn't, it'd be up because it's trying to make you go into a loop here. But if you actually go up here... Oh wait, no, I'm sorry. Is it... Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you actually go up here, like you hit this... On the second time, not on the other time when we first knocked it down. There's a route here that in the other one wasn't here. I don't know if that makes any sense, you'd probably have to see it yourself to understand. But if you're getting lost, just go back and watch this. Like, literally second for second, and you'll, you'll realize what's different. Gosh, this guy's hurt. Oh my goodness. Oh my god, why did they hit so hard? This is brutal. Alright, cool. Pretty much what we need. We're gonna rest at this grace before we try to take this fight on. Level up our endurance. Oh, we can't level up. Yet. My bad. Okay, now that this door is open, we're gonna pop a rune arc because this fight might be a little difficult without our katana upgraded. But basically, we're going to go in here, we're going to pop our Wonders Physic, we're going to summon our ally, hope we can draw enough aggro. Because this guy is a bleed machine!
huge damage from the rock rough. I like to see that. I think Rotten Breath will pretty much do the job for us here. Along with our ally. Just watch out for this guy. He's using Reduvia. He's not too hard of a boss. And just like that. Lord of Blood's Exaltation. Blood loss in vicinity increases attack power. And it is by 20%. Entrance. Bada bing bada boom, you are significantly more powerful. Just from this little short sewer uh, journey. It is difficult to traverse the sewers though, I will admit. Alright, so once you've done that, we're gonna go get our second Uchi Katana because... Nagakiba is just too heavy. I do recommend it though, if you really want a long Katana, it is incredibly cool. For now, we're just trying to be efficient with our stats. So, second katana is actually right here. We go to Saints Bridge in Limgrave. Grace name. I'm gonna ride this way. Pretty sure it's literally right up here. Right here. Awesome. Yeah. This little ghost guy here. Door. And this this katana is actually just a pick up a bull katana. So all you have to do to get it is come to these death touch catacombs. If you're having trouble finding it, Google Death Touch Catacombs. You'll find a way to find it. It's another one of these catacomb dungeons. These guys are so annoying to deal with. I'm gonna run past them. Because I believe the katana is almost at the very end of this one. Oh no, actually, I, I completely lied. There is a side door you have to go through at the beginning. That is my bad. Haven't grabbed this katana in a while. It's right over here. You're gonna have an army of skeletons running at you. Come through this door. Pick up this item and look at that. We have two Uchi katanas now. You might be seeing double. And then we're gonna come out the way we came. Double Uchi Katanas is so good, guys. It's uh, one of the highest DPSs in the game. There is a jump attack build with curved swords and with dual, dual uh, twin blades. But the katanas are more uh, more my style. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna save all this money actually. Alright, so now that we've done that, go back to round table. We're gonna do the same thing where we're just buying as many smithing stones as we can. And we might be able to get both katanas to plus 12, which will be extremely strong. We got a smithing stone ones. So we only need 12. We have 12, so we, we're good on here. We bought too many last time. I was being dumb. But I didn't need to upgrade both swords. So we, we do need to upgrade one sword, so that's fine. We know we need at least 12, and then didn't we say 9 before? So that's 21. And then we need 24 in order to upgrade two swords. Okay. And now we're gonna go ahead and put the other sword in our left hand. And we'll equip Bloody Slash to both of them, so they're both on blood proc, which just means we get more bleed. You'll see it in a moment. Oh. 
Don't pay me any. Just lay out you. Yeah, sure. We don't need to do anything yet. Is that the Uchi Katana? Make sure you set the one from the Nagakiba, so you keep both Katanas with blood. And then you're just gonna strengthen these guys up. Hopefully we have enough runes. We don't have enough threes. Do we? Do we buy? We actually didn't buy enough. Whatever. Well, we'll get this one upgraded a lot. We actually got it really high. We got it to plus fourteen. Let's go back and buy the last three that we needed. Plus fourteen. Ooh, the damage. I must have did my math wrong, but got it right now. I know I'm gonna need to pop some, uh... I know I'm gonna need to pop these. I switched the view to simple, by the way, right there, because it does let me move while popping these. Oh, I can't see how many runes I have. But I that should be enough. Kind of going crazy right there. Alright. Cool. There we go. We got a plus 14 and a plus 13. Incredible. Alright. What do we do with this? Well. I don't know. <laughs> I believe we should start doing some side quests. First one that comes to my mind is the Rani quest line. The other one is the Volcano Manor quest line. And then there is the Fia quest line. So. I think that'll be for next episode.